how's everyone doing? Hi, hi. Hi, my name is Danielle Cadet and I am so excited to be here with you today. Like I said, the rain let up, right, everybody? The sun came out. Um, and this is gonna be a really fantastic conversation uh, for an, a really fantastic film um, that really delves into something that's such a deep part of black culture, uh, specifically for young black women. Um, and, and it was just really awesome to see it highlighted here in this film. And I am extremely excited to have the conversation with the film's director and executive producer. Please, everybody, lots of energy for Haley Elizabeth Anderson and Storm Reed. <laughs> Okay, we're about to be kikiing, y'all, okay? <laughs> so get comfortable. So just to give another, you know, a quick synopsis on Jazzy Jumpers, it's about a double Dutch team in Bronzeville, Brooklyn. Any, anybody from Brooklyn? Brooklyn in the house? All right, come on. Bop, 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 okay? Um, a brown, um, double Dutch team in Brooklyn um, defending their world championship title and the various challenges they face throughout the 2022 season. I am from New York, born and raised. My family is from Crown Heights. So to see Bronzeville, um, which I don't know if a lot of you know, we don't really always get those positive stories coming out of Brooklyn, but coming out of Bronzeville specifically. So just to see this powerful and positive story um, of, of young women was for me, such a huge takeaway was just, I, I just loved seeing little black girls just be black girls and just live their lives. Double Dutch is such an iconic staple in black culture. Can each of you tell me, you know, what Double Dutch means to you personally? Haley, I'll start with you. Um, yes. Um, I mean, I love the image of Double Dutch. I mean, number one, like, I can't remember, like, when I was five, like, my mom brought out a jump rope. It's also, like, super inexpensive, and right. I moved around a lot, so, like... Yeah jump ropes were just everywhere. It was like 99 cents. You go to the 99 cent store and like get a jump rope. <laughs> and so that's what it really meant to me. It was like my mom bringing us to the store and be like, you're going to get jump rope and bubbles and right. chalk. Yes. And it's like summertime. It's like summertime. summertime. Yeah, it's yes. a summertime activity, super easy. Um, but then I also watched Sesame Street and it was all over Sesame Street. So it was also New York to me. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love, shout out to Sesame Street for having Double yeah. Dutch. In <laughs> what about you, Storm? Yeah, I mean, I, I love Double Dutch, even though I don't know how to. Um, <laughs> I've always loved jump roping, but I think my first introduction really, as I, I'm sitting here thinking about it, uh, to Double Dutch was the movie, I don't know if anybody knows the Disney movie, Let It Shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh, I was so mesmerized, like Haley said, by the image of, of what Double Dutch is, but it's a sport right, and right. it takes, focus and dedication so Absolutely. just to be able to you know in jazzy jumpers see these young girls do it but also do it really really well yes. is, is just beautiful and i know it's it's a quintessential thing that is in our community so right. to be able to celebrate that um is incredible i love that i love i love that you say that that like even for those of us who don't know how to du double dutch or if like you're, if you're like yeah. me you're not you don't double dutch well <laughs> you got hit a lot of times totally i could like feel thing. those um yeah. i could feel those phone cords on my legs <laughs> yeah. and i'm like wincing thinking about it but even if you're not that great or if you don't know how to double dutch it still feels you still identify it with it so much as as a black person yes. and you know i love storm we talked about this a little bit um the fact that we identify double dutch as a sport mm -hmm. from the very beginning yes. of the film i love that it is like double dutch mm -hmm. is a sport this is not just like yes it is a pastime mm -hmm. but we have really claimed it and it is, it's a form of athleticism. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see a bit of that. Do we have double dutchers in the audience? Anybody know how to double dutch? Yes. Okay. Some people are reluctantly putting their hands up. I see y'all, I see you though, you can't hide. I see you. And even if you got your, your feet caught in the phone cord, it's okay. Yes. And for anybody who, um, you know, is not really that familiar, um, let's take, let's take, let's play a clip um, to give you some background. That deserves a round of applause. Imagine just having one rope and then black girls picking it up and being like, let's add another rope, right? Like, just like, let's just make this a little harder. Um, I, I mean, I love, I love that it just, we refer to it as the black girls pastime, right? That's just such a, it feels so warm and sacred. It just feels beautiful. Um, and man, are we innovative? Like what? Like who is just out here like, 
just jump rope with two ropes, okay? <laughs> and then just add some flips and, you know, no big deal. Um, so Haley, tell us a little bit about what drew you to this project and, and how it came about. Yes. Um, so several things. Um, they sent me a reel. They had been shooting with the team for a little bit and sent me a reel and I was just like, oh my God, number one, I love Double Dutch. I love New York stories. And of course, most important is like, I love telling adolescent kind of coming of age stories. And especially when it's from a black girl's perspective. So that was like the, the major points. Um, and then I also just love the idea of Double Dutch. It, it like folds so many like folk traditions, black folk traditions in one sport. There's call and response, there's rhyme, there's clapping games, and then jumping, which is definitely like, if you look up anywhere on the internet, you can find people in Africa doing these really intricate jumping games. So there's just so many, there's so much like black tradition folded into the, the game itself. So those were all the things, like as soon as I saw like girls in a gym jumping rope, I was like, yeah, that's, that's the draw. <laughs> I love that. And I love that, that um, connection to yeah. the motherland too. Yes. Like that is just such a beautiful yeah. um, connection there. Storm, this is your first time serving as executive producer. Is that right? Yes, yes. I'm very I excited. mean, can we get a round of applause for that? Congratulations. Because you are how old, my dear? I just turned 20. Okay. I don't know about y'all, but I was not an EP at 20, okay? So that is, I was not going into my junior year of college with any EP credit. So that is incredible. Congratulations. Talk to us about that leap, pun intended. And, and what was it about Jazzy Jumpers that really, that drew you, that pulled you in? Yeah, I mean, um, my mom and I have a production company, A Seed and Wings, and I think, not I think, I know our mission. Come on, I know. <laughs> I, I'm trying to stop saying I think. There you go. Um, I know that our mission with the production company is to tell real, authentic stories. Uh, so when Jazzy Jumpers came across our plate, I, I fell in love immediately because, one, I'm just a lover of sports, a person that has never played a sport. Um, I, I just appreciate sports, and... I do look at Double Dutch as a sport. So I was very intrigued and very fascinated with that aspect. But I think what, I did it again. Um, I know. I know. Come on. <laughs> we are saying I, I know up here. I know that um, I, I, I love the story because I am a young girl growing up that has a lot going on. And I really connected with the girls and, and knowing that we would be able to see their stories and, and like Haley said, see them come of age. And that looks a little messy, but to be able to see them come of age and make mistakes and try to figure out who they are, but also, you know, have to put time and dedication into the sport of double dutch. I, I related to that because of, of what I do being a student and also being able to do the things that I do um, in my career. So I'm just so glad to be a part of it. And, and we're telling stories that aren't being told or, or telling stories that aren't told in the correct way. And I think Haley told the story in the most perfect way. It's so beautiful and so poetic. Absolutely. Um, I think that is so important. Yes, round of applause for that. Because I think you, you know, what you said is just like personally connecting with it so, so deeply as, as a young black woman. And then, you know, the, I can't stress that enough that like, those are not stories that are told correctly, right. right? Like we don't get to see black girls live their lives and sort of see this sort of coming of age story of black young women very often without sort of these complications and this dark cloud and this, you know, things are going to get bad or you're, there's struggle, right? Like, I know, like, particularly for black women, it's always like a struggle story, right? But it is just so wonderful to see celebration and not without, not without challenge, right? Because that is very real. And, and to your point, Storm, it does get messy and it's a sport. I mean, sport is hard and it gets messy and it's challenging, but it does it feel heavy and, and, and truly, Haley, you, you tell that story so beautifully, really. Thank you. And um, Haley, I'm sure so much research went into making this film. Um, what were your inspiration and references for this film? And what was the most surprising thing you learned about Double Dutch? Um, so I guess my first reference would be Sesame Street. <laughs> you know, they have those like old segments where kids would sort of tell yes. about their, talk about their day, talk about their uncle or something like that. Yeah. Or, um, I love those little films and they stuck in my memory. And there was actually like a Double Dutch competition one, I remember. Mm, that was yeah. the first thing I started with. And then I looked at, you know, 
Style Wars, all of the like New York documentaries, yeah. Style Wars, Wild Style, um, and listen to like a lot of the, the music that came out of that era that, that would mention Double Dutch. Right. Um, so those are some of my inspirations, and I loved mostly because pe the kids were sort of talking for themselves, mm -hmm. and I love like kids' voiceover. Mm -hmm. So those were things that I drew from. And what was your second question? I'm sorry. Um, and what, and what what's the uh, most surprising thing you learned? Oh, I think there's an element of double dutch in a lot of cultures. Mm -hmm. Like there's this Filipino game called like tinkling. I'm gonna say it wrong. Tinkling, I think it's like with sticks. Okay. And so I think it was just, it's like lovely to see how we're all sort of doing our own, same thing, but a different version of it. And right. I think that was really lovely. So I, I learned that and then like, it's super athletic. Yeah. It's Absolutely. like, I tried it and it's like, you think it's like easy and like, you know, knees. <laughs> it's hard after a while. And like, they're jumping at a really high speed. So it's extremely athletic. It's like, like I'm hopefully hoping it's like skateboarding where people like get behind it. It's like a street sport that right. girls have made, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it gets this sort of like skateboarding type vibe, you it's know, true. it's like a street game. And, yeah, but that's it's a like really great point. Tough. So. That yeah. is a really great point. What I, I want to talk a little bit about the Bronzeville neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, and what, what did you learn about Bronzeville yeah. while, making, while making the film? And did, and did anything surprise you about it? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I expected, when I saw the kids on the film, I, like on the reel that I saw, I expected that everything was going to be just like very magical because I like believe really deeply in childhood and the freedom of that. And, and I think it wasn't surprising. It was just delightful just to be in the presence of kids, just right. being friend, kids and friends and the funny things that they say. Mm -hmm. um, and that's Brownsville. It gets like this really negative rap. And like in, in all of those like past documentaries, you know, from the 70s, you always have the, the reporter being like, it's so tough. These youth are doing this and that. Right. And it's right. like, but really, if you're just in the middle of it, it's just a lot of joy and a lot of play. Yeah. And um, that was just what I, I'm like obsessed with. It's just like, kids being and being able to play and be free. Um, so that's what Brownsville is. It, it's just like any other neighborhood yes. filled with joy and neighbors. And then there's just a lot of time, like it's untouched in a strange way. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Brownsville it's one of the few, been gentrified. Yes, it's one of the few neighborhoods and, in Brooklyn that. And it's like, families have been there for several yes. generations. Like I know Tony, who's the coach in the film, has been in the same apartment that her grandmother and her mother was in. Mm. So it's like you feel that there's this a true sense of community there and that's really powerful. And you can't really, it's, it's kind of wearing away in yes. New York and in Brooklyn specifically. And um, it's really nice to see. And, and it's one of those things that are like, strikes you. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I just love the use of the words joy and freedom. Yeah, like, absolutely. you know, to be able to use those words in reference to to, to little black kids yeah. is is so important. And you're absolutely right. I mean, Bronzeville is one of those, it's one of the, I don't know, if the, for the Brooklyn folks. In yeah. the, um, it's one of, it might be like one of the only neighborhoods oh, yeah. really that hasn't been deeply gentrified um, and still feels, you know, like a deep black community presence is there. And, um, you know, to your point, folks still living in their grandparents' homes or apartments or there's such a rich history there. And you talk about Tony and, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about the sport. Um, and But I want to talk a little bit more about the team and specifically the coach because yes. Tony is a big part yes. of, of this film and um, she is a force. Like, she is yes. incredible. Um, coach Tony is really something to watch. And, and not only does she coach these young black girls and, and these women, but she mentors them. Yes. She really takes them, she takes a deep, uh, uh, she takes deep participation in their lives. Um, so let's take a look at, at another clip that's going to show us a little bit about Coach Tony. I love that she says that. It's hood famous, right? Hood famous. It's good to, be, good to be known, but yes. she's trying to win. Yes. Um, Haley, tell, tell us a bit more about Coach Tony. You, yeah. you, ta you started talking about her a little bit. Mm -hmm. Why is she such a critical, critical subject in this documentary? Yeah, so Coach Tony was a jazzy jumper when she was young, and she found... Um, Coach Sandy Baker Fortune, who's the original coach of the Jazzy Jumpers. And so Coach Sandy passed away in 2011, and she sort of passed the torch to Tony. And so Tony has a, a, a deep sense of responsibility to carry on this tradition, which is really important because Double Dutch is like a folk tradition, and it is passed down in that way. Right. And so Tony's sort of taking that upon herself, and she cares, like, 
uh, Sandy Baker Fortune was like her mother, so she feels like a deep responsibility to be a mother to the children that she's mentoring and in, in, in the team. And I think when she says it's good, it's great to be known, but I'd rather be victorious, it's like the girls are her bottom line. Like it's really nice to be on Good Morning America, it's really nice to do like a Nike spot, but like at the end of the day, those people leave the community and she's there in the community and she's with the girls, you know, every single day. Like two of the the jumpers live in her building and like she you know she's a true mother she walks them home at night um when things feel a little dangerous so i think she just bears a lot of the weight of the legacy of sandy baker fortune the legacy of the jazzy jumpers and just the tradition of, of double dutch so mm, that's so powerful it. seriously that's really powerful yeah. Storm, as we're talking about confidence, right, and we're saying, I know and not I think, right, um, I think Coach Tony is a really great example of just incredible confidence. Um, she knows that the Jazzy Jumpers are, like, a big deal, right? But talk to me about the impact of, of that sort of energy on, on young girls and young women on the team, you know, even just as you, you were saying how much you identify with them and even going through your own journey of saying, I'm trying to stop saying I think. Like, can you talk a little bit about the impact of having somebody like Coach Tony who's, who just exudes that confidence and, and, and quite frankly shows is sort of an example for those young women? Right, I, I, I mean, it's super important uh, to have someone. I think not only young women, just but young people in general, uh, to have someone to look to for inspiration, for... Uh, empowerment for someone to pour into you I think is 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 so amazing and such a blessing uh, I didn't have a, a, a coach growing up but I have always I think the Lord uh, have had my mom and she has always instilled that confidence in me um, to just continue to 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 go, to, to do what you want to do, to take up space, to pursue all of my passions and my dreams. I don't, I was trying to remember sitting here, but I did something, I was trying to do something the other day and I was in the kitchen with my mom and I was like, I can't do it. And she was like, yes, you can. And she literally stood there until I figured it out. And it's not a way of, of you know, trying to make me feel like, uncomfortable because I said I, I couldn't do something is I'm going to garner that support and I'm going to be there every step of the way. And sometimes I'm going to talk you through it. Sometimes I'm not going to have to, but to have that support, whether it's your mom, a coach, an auntie, a sister, a friend, to be able to look to someone for inspiration, for confidence, to be able to, you know, just say, Hey, I don't know. What do I do? I, I think that's beautiful, and I hope everyone, especially young people, get to have somebody in their life to be able to do that for them. Yes, absolutely. Big shout out to your mom. It's Robin here. I, I don't. Oh, there she is. Hey, girl. Big shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. We had to embarrass you a little bit. Shout out to all the moms and the aunties who are really instilling that confidence. You're right. It's so so important. And I think it's really important as as young people, as young black women, to see that and to sort of lead by example. Um, which is so much of what Coach Tony does. Haley, in that last clip, Coach Tony says it's good to be known, but for me as a coach, I'm, I'm just trying to win. And I'd love to unpack that with you because, you know, there's a lot in that statement weighing, you know, notoriety versus success. What are you hoping audience take away from this moment, from watching that? Oh, man. Um... Well, I mean, first of all, I want the audience to take away like that these girls exist. They're here and they're doing their their thing. And I think winning also ensures that they keep they have the ability to keep going. And you know, she's concerned about the girls that are going to come in the next year and the next two years because like every time they, you know, somebody graduates high school, they kind of just go on. Um, so I think, you know, winning just ensures that the team is is still alive. So I really want people to know that Double Dutch is alive and well. <laughs> um, jazzy Jumpers exists. And, and it's, it's a sport, and it could, it could be really exciting like, to, you know, to see what Double Dutch does in the, in the future. Right, right, right. Sport. Storm, lo would love to hear your, your thoughts on that too. Like, you know, this sort of idea of notoriety versus really longevity, to Haley's point, of like ensuring that the Jazzy Jumpers, that that legacy persists. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I think what Haley said was so so uh, poetic in a way because she's like, I just want people to know that these people exist, that these girls are taking up space, that these girls are not perfect. They are perfectly imperfect. I, I hope that's what audiences can take away as well as all of the other things. But 
I mean, to, to, to the point of notoriety, success, longevity, I mean, I think why Coach Tony is so powerful and so impactful is because of her outlook. It's, it's, yeah, she wants to win, but it's, I don't think it's a win for her. It's a win for, the, for these girls. She wants the girls to be able to feel that feeling of, oh, I won. But I don't think her end all to be all is to win. And I think she's instilled into the girls. It's not all about winning. Like sometimes you're gonna, you're gonna fall down, but you gotta pick yourself back up. You gotta dust yourself off and you gotta keep on going. And I think that's another one of the reasons why I, I fell in love with this project. And, and so glad that Haley captured that moment is because I don't, I don't really, I don't really believe in the, the hoopla of like, oh, it's a spectacle and oh, you're winning and oh, you get to do all of these things. Yes, it's a blessing, but I believe personally that like my career is bigger than myself. I'm not even doing this for uh, selfish reasons. I'm doing it to be able to impact audiences, impact young people. So mm. to, yes. Um, so I think that's, I think that's what this, this film is going to do. It's yeah. going to be able to, you know, uh, be very impactful and, and very familiar to a lot of people. Absolutely. And that's a good feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. Woo, girl, not you speaking to me at my big age. <laughs> Like, I was not talking like this at 20. This is impressive. Shout out to you, Miss Robin. <laughs> Storm, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, we, we said that this is your first time EPing on this project. Um, and, you know, you said that, you know, even though you're not, a, you, you don't jump double dutch. I want to talk about the parallels between maybe filmmaking and double dutch. You know, are there things that as you've been involved with this film, are there sort of parallels between Double Dutch and the experience of, of filmmaking that, that you've, that you've um, kind of come across in absolutely. this process? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know how to Double Dutch because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. And filmmaking and producing is hard. Like, hopefully I'll be able to do it one day. But like, sitting in this chair right now, I can't do what, what Haley does. And there's so many elements that go into making a film what it is. So to be able to learn during this process was a blessing and, and my mom was on the ground when I wasn't on, be, whoa, I can't talk, when I wasn't able to be on the calls, um, when I wasn't able to, you know, talk to Haley or talk to the indigenous group, like my mom was there and she was putting in the hard work and we were giving notes and we were looking at dailies when we could. So I think the parallels is like it's hard work and it's dedication and it might not work out all the time and like something might not just go right one day, but we just got to continue to go, continue to push forward and thankfully we were able to make something beautiful and, and that's what those girls do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Haley, what about for you with, the, with, with making this film? Is there the parallels between yeah. Double Dutch and filmmaking? I mean, the same thing that Storm said, really. It's like there's something that, you know, Tony keeps saying, you know, she counts off one, two, one, two, one, two. She just says, keep jumping, keep jumping and like sometimes the girls would be like it's too fast it's too fast and it's like it's too slow it's too slow because your jumper is like jumping at a certain speed and you're spinning at a certain speed it's like you always have to work together mm -hmm. you always have to be aware of like your team's sort of speed yeah. so that's very much like filmmaking yeah. <laughs> you're like you have to be aware of everybody like on the set the girls the camera person like you're always jugg juggling that and you have to be really like clued into that so that's it's absolutely the same <laughs> I, love that. I, I love that I love that I was double, I'm a double-handed turner, so I, 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 had to, I had to try to figure it out too, like just being in sync, like you said, being like sync, really yeah. being in sync with, with other people, which is, which is really challenging. Yeah. So we've seen a preview, um, we've gotten a little preview of Coach Tony, but it's only right that you, that you really get to see her in action, yeah. her strength, her leadership, and her drive for excellence that is unmatched, it's just insane. She's exactly the coach these young black girls need. Um, and I think it's so powerful to watch her do that. So, so let's take a look at, at, Ms. Tony, at Coach Tony in action. Listen, <laughs> she said, ready your ropes. And I'm like, oh, let me get my, let me get my act together. Let me try to, okay. Like, not even me double dutching in heels. <laughs> she is, she plays zero games. Yes. And like, but, those young women really need that, that inspiration. I mean, I even love seeing, seeing, you know, the, the little girl who's, who's nodding Lauren. her head. Lauren, like she's yeah, like, Lauren. She's like, yes, like, yeah, right? Like, it's like, yeah. I'm getting 
red right now, but yes. I know I need to get red, right? <laughs> <laughs> Haley, capturing raw moments like that yes. as, as, a, as a documentary filmmaker, that is no easy feat. No. That is tough stuff. Tough. Can you talk about how it felt, you know, witnessing those moments live? And, and did you know that was the kind of stuff that was really going to give the audience goosebumps when you saw it? Yeah, I think so. Like, doing it is like, you know, you know it's just tough. So, like, when I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I know, you know, I'm like, but she's right. In some cases, it's like they kind of need this. So it's sort of like doing a, what, what is it, like a safari film? And, you yeah, know, like, yeah. the little bird's going to get it. And you're like, oh, God. Like, you just got to sit there and be like, yeah, she's right. And you, or you see it coming before it comes, and they, they don't know it's coming, and you can see everything. That was tough, but I think those moments like work because it's it's like sports film, you know. Right, it right. Builds like anticipation, and um, you you end up really caring for for them whether they win or lose. And, right. Um, but in those moments, you sort of see that it's it's more than that. It's more than about winning or losing. She's like also teaching these other like lessons. moments, their sure. life lessons, you know. Absolutely. Did it, did it take them a while to kind of get comfortable having those kinds of moments with you there? I, I imagine it takes a little time for them to, I don't know, to maybe be less aware of the cameras and to really yeah. to have that real, those real raw moments. Yeah, I think by the time I, I came in, like they were used to the cameras being there or yeah. whatever. But I think it's, it's more of like when you're with them personally, it's yeah. like awkward. It's awkward yeah. for me too because I feel like I'm invading their space. Yeah. So it takes a lot of time to just sort of like, you know, make friends basically. Right, so right. So they can like trust you because it's a big thing yeah. having a camera in your face. Yeah, like, yeah, and letting folks in like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But the little ones were like, they All about it. it. Like, <laughs> Lauren was like, yeah. she was there every day. Like, <laughs> that's like, I love that. Uh, Storm, you've talked about how much your mom was really like a Coach Tony in your life. And I love the story you just shared of your mom being like, don't say I can't. You can do it. She and literally I looked at me. She said, yes, you can. <laughs> I said, okay, well, let me try to figure it out. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about sort of the impact of having that, but then also sort of watching these moments, um, you know, in the film, like watching those raw moments and, and again, the parallels between having somebody like your mother in your life and then also seeing how Coach Tony um, operates in, in these young women's lives. Yeah, I mean, um, it's like I said uh, before, it, it's important to have people in your life to instill things into you and, and to pour into you. And like you said, that probably wasn't the most comfortable thing for them to go to go through, especially knowing like that was being documented on camera. Like, oh, dang, we being yelled at on camera. <laughs> um, but Coach Tony did it with so much love. Like, yeah, she, she's stern and she's going to let you know what you're doing wrong and what you need to fix, but there's love in there. And like Haley said, she's not only trying to teach the lessons of double dutch and what to do, what not to do, she's teaching life lessons. So I think it is important, like I said, to have someone like that, to not always try to gas you up. If you're doing something wrong, it might not make you feel the most comfortable in the moment, but those are the true people who have your best interest at heart is they're gonna tell you when you're doing something right, they're gonna tell you when you're doing something wrong, and it might not feel good, but if you know it's coming from a true, genuine place, you'll, you'll listen. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Haley, what about you? Did you have somebody that felt like that was like a Coach Tony for you in your life? Yeah, uh, my mom, the same, you know. <laughs> Come on, thing. mama. <laughs> yeah. Mamas are really showing out. Yeah, moms are, even, even before this, like, you're fine, you're fine. You know, <laughs> you know it's the same thing every day. Um, but I had a theater teacher um, named Steven Gerald, who was basically my coach. I came into theater school in college. I was super shy. I literally didn't even have a voice. <laughs> like... <laughs> And I don't know, through several semesters, several years, I've just been hours and hours in his office talking, and mm. he was coaching me, and he was like, you need to, this was in Texas, was like, you need to run to New York, you'll find your people there. And like, he would coach me like literally every day, so that, oh, I love he is that. my special person. Oh, I love that, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Storm, when, when Coach Tony says, act as if this is a competition, mm -hmm. I thought that was really powerful. Mm -hmm. how, how does that resonate with you? Oh, it resonates um, 
very true to me. I, I was raised to, you know, always put your best foot forward, always, you know, try your best. And even though you may not get the opportunity, you'll feel good to know that at least you tried your best. And I can think, um, too, when I was auditioning for A Wrinkle in Time, and I was like, there's no way that I'm getting this role. Like, there's no way. But I, I had told myself, and I had had a conversation with my mom, um, she was just like, just go in there, do your best. And I was like, okay. I know, I, I had literally convinced myself that the opportunity wasn't mine, but I was gonna try my best to go in and impress Miss Ava so she can give me an opportunity down the line. So I think it's very important to go into every situation wanting to do your best. And mm. I think it's important though, I know, I know it's important though to... <laughs> Come on, I know, I love it. It's gonna take some work. <laughs> um, I know it is important to, even though you have that confidence, you shouldn't be like, oh yeah, I got this in the bag. Right, because right. then that's when you, you have a false sense of, you know, yes. a lot of things. Yeah. But to go into rooms and take up space and to know that you are meant to be in that room, yes. no matter yes. what is going on, yes. that's the important thing. Yeah. So it's, it's important to, to go into rooms and try your best and go to the job interview and try to get the job. But you know that every opportunity is, it might not be yours. Right, right. And you're not always going to win, but yeah. you'll feel good if you go into an opportunity or if you go into a competition or whatever the case may be, knowing that you, you put your best effort forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Both of y'all are dropping gems today. Mm -hmm. So uh, Crystal mentioned this a little earlier, but Haley, um, you were a part of the 2019 class of the Queen Collective Filmmakers for your short doc documentary, yeah. If <laughs> There Is Light. Thank you. And the Queen Collective is PNG's signature talent development initiative created in partnership with Queen Latifah, Flavor Unit Entertainment, and Tribeca Studios, aimed at accelerating gender and racial equality behind the camera. So shout out to PNG. Let's give them a round of applause for that. So 2019. Yes. Fast forward. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. You know the pand pandemic years are crazy. All right, like it's like four years, yeah. ten years. Who knows? <laughs> and you are an Emmy-nominated director. <laughs> okay. Partnering with PNG Studios again, as well as Indigenous Media, to produce a feature documentary, Jazzy Jumpers. Y'all, I just need y'all to give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Haley. Can you share with us a bit about your, your experience with the Queen Collective and, yeah. and how you've been able to use that experience to, to build as a filmmaker? Yes, so I think the Queen's Collective was like my moment where I, where I stopped saying I think mm -hmm. to I know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would have made it here without that experience. It gave me the words and it gave me sort of the, the like okay to take, like you keep saying take up space, which I love that because I wanted to just, and I still do sometimes, you know, want to be like the smallest, you know, I don't really want to be seen, but it's like taught me to like, it's okay to like voice your opinions, take up space, say no. Um, and then it also just helped me just be in front of people and be used to being in front of people. And I don't think I would have been here or have lasted the last four years without that experience. So it's done, it's done in everything for me really. That's amazing. Yeah. And you've already accomplished so much. And um, you've got just a bright future in, ahead of you. you. So that is just really exciting. Thank you. Speaking of future, Storm, your Instagram bio says future filmmaker, which I am an editor, so I just feel like I'm, I'm just, just going to gently tell you, I feel, I feel like we need to edit that. Because ain't no future filmmaker. You're a filmmaker today, right now. Okay? Right? Um, but now that, yeah, now that you've been part of this project as a producer, can you talk to us about what sort of films you want to make as you continue on with your career? Yes, um, I know that I want to be a part of projects that are, are purposeful, uh, whether that is as an actress or a producer or both or hopefully a director one day. <laughs> um, I want to tell purpose for purposeful stories. I want to be intentional. I don't believe in working just to work. Um, so 
I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what genres those are, but I, I always say that I have the opportunity to say something. So to not say anything is just doing myself and, and so many people a disservice. So I, I, I wanna be intentional. I wanna tell stories that are not being told or not being told correctly. I want to uh, represent the world and the world's experiences and circumstances and, and, and people the right way. I think that's very important, especially with the world that we're living in. So as long as that, oh, I can't talk. As long as it's intentional, purposeful, it's saying something, that's what I, I, that's what I wanna do. That's mm. what I wanna be a part of. That's what I wanna consume even. Yes, yeah. yes, I love that, love that. Well, there are some good stories that are about to be told with you two at the helm. I really hope everybody enjoyed those sneak peeks of the film, but I really, and this conversation, of course, um, I have to tell you, even with those incredible clips, y'all have, you have no idea. That documentary is everything. Like, you need to see the full thing. Um, we have a few minutes for, for questions from the crowd, so um, if anyone wants to raise their hand um, with a question, someone can pass you an, a mic and we can get some, some questions here. Uh, hello, my name is Gabriella, um, and my question is, uh, why do you think? Since I love documentaries about niche topics like this, um, and what would you guys like to do documentaries in the future about uh, other uh, niche topics that involve the Black culture? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's yeah. Like I said, I think folk tradition. I'm really interested in folk tradition, and there's so many of them that we we have. Um, I would love to just keep talking about it. Like, I could have just shot this for another year, too. <laughs> like, it was, um, so yes. yes. Same here. <laughs> Haley, you, you, you said a little bit about Double Dutch. It's kind of similar to sort of like on the fringe when skateboarding yeah, exactly. was, you know, are there other sort of niche cultural things within our community that you feel like have just even just bubbled up even in making this film? Oh my goodness. So for you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like, like now my brain is like going like um, We might have the next film in the I mean, world. Hand, I mean like hand clapping games. Yes. You know, I know yes. a friend of mine a few years ago was making one and that's also why this piqued my interest because right. she, she was studying all those things, hand clapping games and the rhymes that go with them. Mm -hmm. And so play and that idea of like black girls playing, yeah. that's one that is like, I, I think needs another movie. Yeah. <laughs> there's a history there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of imagery that's iconic. That's, That's cool. related to that as yeah. well. So, yeah. yeah, Storm, anything coming to mind for you? I want to be a part of this film <laughs> that Haley's talking about because, um, yeah, it's a, a, another quintessential thing that you do growing yeah. up. You're on the playground and you're, yeah. you're singing yes. the song yes. and it's like you remix it or in yeah. summer camp, it's like, yeah. it's the, it's the yeah. thing. So Absolutely. I want to be a part of that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Any more questions? Yes, we got a question here in the front. Do we have the mic? Okay, we got the mic coming. Hi, thank you for all that great information. So this is a comment. I think we would tend, and I'm an old double dutch jumper, but we tend to focus on the activity, the excitement, all the different moves, the athleticism, I can't even say it. <laughs> thank you, athleticism of the jumper. But our moderator pointed out just how important those rope turners are, because it truly is a team effort. I mean, yes. they are critical yes. to the success of those folks in the middle of the ropes. Yes. So it was just a comment. Oh, yes. I love that. That's Thank true. you. Yes. yes. Several a, of our girls are turners. Yes. As a double-handed turner, I know I would not make it on the Jazzy Jumper. <laughs> I know that I can admit that. I know my limitations. But no, that's such a great point. I mean, to your point earlier, Haley, it is so important to be in sync as a team, to operate as a team. Collaboration. And colla the collaboration. And, yeah. and, and we see a lot of that throughout, throughout the film, how important it is for, for the women to work together and to be in sync with each other. And Coach yes. Tony is constantly sort of that one-two count of yeah. making sure that they're all in rhythm with each other. It's really, it, it's, it's yeah. amazing to yes. watch. And they're always really talking is. to each other too. Yes. Like Lauren, the little girl that was like nodding her head, she's the, the talker. She's like, go on, you can do yeah. it. You know, she's yeah. great. <laughs> and I think that's such a huge and important metaphor for life, right? Yeah. Like you go out into the world learning that you have to be in sync with other people. You have to work with other people. That it's not just about the jumper. It is about the whole yeah. operation, really. So that is so important. Yeah. Another question. 
Namaste, beautiful people. I'm Donna Thompson Bennett. I have had the joy of living in Brooklyn some years ago, Fort Greene, and then the East New York area. Ooh, slash come on, big up Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> and I was curious because of the joy, but also the write up that talked about the challenges. Yeah. So I have a two part question. As you were doing this, what was some of the joy you yourself experienced or witnessed um, with? the beautiful young people who are doing this, and also what were some of the challenges that you witnessed or what impacted you actually filming? I know we don't want to give away everything, yeah. <laughs> but what were some of the challenges? Um, challenges was like figuring out, I could say just like a really like on, very obvious one, it's like being there when things are happening. <laughs> like that's a huge yeah. challenge. It's yeah. like it's racing to somebody's house or something and, and being there when things are like really happening. Um, the joy, I mean, just being with the kids all the time. That's fun. I mean, I got to relive my own childhood and be a kid with them. Like before practice, I would just like play basketball with them. So that's always fun. <laughs> I, I love, love kids. So, yeah. yeah. Tom, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I think seeing the girls be joyful made me joyful, yeah. um, watching the dailies and seeing them, you know, mess up in practice and laugh about it, shake it off, communicate with each other. And then, I mean, the challenges, I feel like there were some challenges that we faced <laughs> filming, <laughs> but even within the challenges, I think I tried to find joy because, you know, not to spoil anything, but. It was messy. There was yeah. a lot going Lots. on, and, yeah. and trying to pull people's attention when you're just you just want to be a young person right. is hard. But I appreciated that because that's what I was going through. What right. I will probably continue to go through. Right. Like, right. how do I do want how do I want to divide my time? Yeah. So even though that was a little frustrating for us, like, oh no, we need her at the practice. <laughs> but you know, it's it's life. Yeah. These young girls were living. So even though. Some of the stuff was challenging. To be able to just see them be joyful and live their lives is, right. is what made me joyful. Right, right. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's a great question. Oh. Hey, I, hello. Welcome Hi. to the vineyard. It's my first time. Good seeing you. Oh, welcome. You know, the filmmakers here in person. Question is, what was the time? I'm an athlete. Um, so I know the time that goes into training. So what was the time these girls went through as far as like from their day starting preparing for a world championship, especially defending their title, what time went into it? Like was it we get up at 6 a.m., we got three practices, training sessions a day? Like what was it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's practice every question. day. Yeah. Every, every day, summer and fall. There's like no break, really. Mm -hmm. um, and Tony ensured that that was, yeah. That's <laughs> I can't say anything else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was kind of the thing for me too. Was yeah. I was like, I'm, you know, we talked about Loftus. double touch being like a summer thing. Yeah. I was like, oh no, there's a oh, oh all day. Yeah. Oh, this isn't all like season. seasonal. Like this is like we are doing this all the time. Yeah. But yes, yeah, we don't want to give away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I have a question. Um, my name is Jasmine, and I'm a rising senior at Harvard University. Oh, you go, girl. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, so I know that you guys both mentioned a love for filmmaking. And Storm, you were saying that you had previous experience doing acting and producing. So I'm wondering if there was a pinnacle like moment in your lives where you're like, OK, these stories needed to be told, and it needs to happen this way specifically, and I need to be a part of that world specifically. What, what was it about filmmaking that really drew you guys in, in addition to all the um, other amazing things that you guys are also interested in? Yeah, I mean, I've been um, acting for a really long, really long time. Um, thankfully, it doesn't feel like, I don't feel like I should be saying a really long time, but it has been a really long time. Um, I've been acting for a really long time, and it's always been something that I've loved and, and been my passion, but when A Wrinkle in Time came out um, and young girls, specifically young uh, black girls, started to come up to me and thank me for allowing them to see themselves represented, that's when I realized, even like at 13, and, and it's still something that I'm trying to, you know, uncover what I wanna do, how I wanna spend my time, how I can spend my time doing this most usefully. I, I realized at that moment, I was like, oh, 
I'm not just doing this for me. This is not just a fun thing that I get to do. This is impacting people. Like audiences are impacted by the work that I do. So that's when I realized like, oh, we can be a little selective of, of what we want to do. We don't have to just work to work. We can, you know, really be a part of something that means something to not only audiences, but to me. So that's what um, I'm, I'm trying to do, what I will continue to do. I hope that answered your question. Mm, yeah, I love that. We can be selective about what we want to do. We have a question right here. Hi, um, my name is Demoye, and I am a film composer. Um, I actually have a question for the both of you, but per first I have a comment, and I wanted to say this whole conversation has been so inspiring, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the film, but my question is, and I had to write it down, but um, can you remember the one best piece of advice you received from either your mom or anyone else that has helped you early in your career? Um, I think it's what we were talking about earlier about taking up space and my theater teacher. Um, I, you know, I'd be, I'd come into his office basically crying <laughs> and he'd just be like, what are you <laughs> crying for? <laughs> like, get out there. <laughs> like, he would use harsher words. <laughs> Literally, like, what are you doing? He looked at, he looked at me like I was crazy. Um, and I think he would act as if I had the confidence before I had it mm. and would talk to me as if I had already become the person that I was supposed to be. Um, and that helped me a lot. So. Uh, Miss Oprah said to me, um, Y'all um, know who that is. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Oprah said to me on set uh, one day, and I was, it was so, what I was freaking out about is just so silly. Um, I was like, I don't wanna be too tall, because both of my sisters are six feet. So I was like, I don't wanna be too tall. Anyways, she told me, don't waste energy on things that you can't change in life, when you could be using that energy on something else more positive in your life. And even though the situation was so small and so silly, I was like, oh, she's right. Like, I can't control that. So overthinking, worrying, crying about something that you can't control, you can use that same energy and, and, and do something. To do something that you can control or, or put that energy somewhere to where it'll be useful for you and, and, and for your mind. So I, I appreciate that and I, I think about that a lot. That is amazing. I think we've got one more. Do we, we have time for one more, right? Okay. Hi. Um, you guys talked about black folk tradition and also just like the history of Double Dutch. What was the process of research for the film? Well, I, would, I read some more books. Like I had already had like a book about sort of um, black folk tradition. And I just revisited all the documentaries where like Style Wars, Wild Style, um, which is a totally different thing, but you can find Double Dutch all through there. And then I talked to a lot of the people that were just in the Seth Lowe Center. Um, I talked to all the girls, you know, that we were with and talked to um, just a lot of older adults, like when I would tell them about the project, we just get into a conversation about Double Dutch. And so it was really like an oral history type research process. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Those, we get, we have one more? We, oh, we had a question of when is the film coming out? Oh, when is the film coming out? They want to know, they want to yeah, know, they want to yeah, know. I know, yeah, I know there's do you want to go ahead? You could. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we don't, I was going to say, do you want to share like the process, I guess, so you're going to... Take it to film festivals? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we'll be going to film festivals, hopefully. So we're in the process of that, I can't say. Yeah. Very much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what we need is, I think, I think it would be great to just have, send great vibes and prayers. So yes. for, really, for All the, the film to be successful be and for it to nice. really be successful at film festivals yeah. so it can be presented to the masses, yes, as yes. it is. <laughs> you know, and another shout out to P&G for, for supporting projects like this and for supporting young black filmmakers like, like yourself, Haley. So that is, that's another just huge shout out to P&G for that. Thank you all for coming out. If you are so inspired, I believe the corner store on Circuit Avenue sells jump ropes. So get after it. P&G, I think we need to have, um, I think we might need to have a double dutch contest next, next August. Should we plan for that? Yes. I don't know how much contest, I will, you know, maybe just some fun. I but gotta practice. How cool would it be, right? Let's just get out That's in the great. square on Circuit Ave and Double Dutch. Yes. 
I feel like we need to do that. I don't know, P and G, just like sis, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned for details on, on Jazzy Jumper's global premiere. Again, let's we're asking for those thoughts and prayers and those positive vibes. Massive shout out to B and G Studios for bringing us all together today. Shout out to Indigenous Media and Seed and Wings Productions for working with PNG Studios to make Jazzy Jumpers a possibility. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the island. Thank you both for working on this incredible film. I'm so excited for the future storytelling you're going to be doing and the careers, just the, the really awesome stories you're going to continue to tell. We are going to be better for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks.